Does your thread drawer look like this? This is one of three thread drawers I need to clean and organize, and I thought I would just walk through the process with you so you can see how I'm going to turn this mess into something a little bit neater and easier to work with. I have learned if things are organized and neat that it's so much easier to create and for me to be inspired and for me to be able to find the thread I need when I need it and not have to go through three drawers and hunt and peck will make my life a lot easier. So hopefully you will get some tips on this on how to do your thread drawers. So let's get started. The first step is to have some baskets or bowls or something that you can start sorting the fabrics into because the goal is to get them all out of the drawer first see what we have to work with, and then get it put back in an orderly fashion. So the next step is just to sort the threads. So I'm gonna get started. All right, so the first step is to separate them, I think by thread weight, that is what I'm going to attempt. And if that doesn't work, we will come out with a different way to sort them out, but uh, that is the goal right now. And I do have, I am like very 50 weight heavy because I use a lot of 50 weight threads. But I do also have quite a bit of 40 weight because I do applique and I like the way a 40 weight thread looks on the edge because I want it to really pop and stand out. Um, and then I have all these like little sets that came to me and I am going to, because they are not, they are no longer needed to be kept as a set, I'm going to go ahead and separate them into my threads by weight. Again, any time that you can take a big thing and make it smaller and more um, accessible and easier to deal with, the easier the job is going to be. So this is this is the big part. And thankfully, I do have 99% Aurafil. Um, actually, I am now an Aura philosopher, which is a, a teacher who does a lecture through Aura, well, it's through me, but partnered with Aurafil, all about their threads and how they work and how they're created and the different weights and what you can do with them. Um, and that information will be up on our website shortly. But, um, so that that's part of it. I have to say I've purchased all these Aurafil threads because I've loved Aurafil longer than um, I, I can tell you. And it was through that love that Aurafil found us and asked me to participate in their program. So, currently, this is not a paid sponsorship yet. Alright, so, and you can always find it, like these are Mettler threads, and it says it right on the spool bottom. They're not color-coded like Aurafil, but it does say right on there 50 weight, so I know those go over there. And this is the boring part, so I'll probably just speed this part up for you. Okay, now that we've got them all sorted, I ended up with a little bit of 40 weight, two baskets of 50 weight, and then some specialty threads. And that's kind of where I expected it to be because this is the weight thread I use all the time. And I have three drawers in which to divide them in. So what I think I'm going to do, and I hopefully this will work, is I'm going to make the top drawer my aura fill threads, and I'm going to use these drawer dividers that I bought, which I hope will work. They uh, spring form into your drawer and they'll divvy it up and then I can separate them by weight in the drawers. Um, I'm hoping, I'll probably have to put the bulk of the Aurafil in this drawer and then some of the neutrals in the second drawer. And then I'm gonna separate the Mettler threads and the specialty threads together, mainly because I use Aurafil 99% of the time, and now I'm using it for projects for Aurafil and for the lecture, so I wanna make sure that I have it where I can get it because that's the one I'm gonna grab the most. So, next step, figure out if these drawer dividers are actually going to work in my drawers. I have had these hidden under my table for months wanting to shoot this video, but not wanting to clean my thread drawers. So I'm excited to finally get into this project. Uh, that's part of what the new year is for me, is like reset, reorganize, take a breath, 
mainly because our business is slowest around Christmas. Uh, we are a design studio and that's mostly when the fabric companies are off doing their work, um, in, or off from doing their work. Okay, so they're gonna work this way. So, let me do it over here in this drawer with the overhead camera is better. So it's a spring drawer divider. I'm gonna take a spool of thread and lay it in my drawer so I can see where I need this. Whoops. Oh, these are gonna work perfect. Look at that. So instead of my threads flying all over the drawers, I'm going to be able to just put them all in that little column. Oops. Under construction. There we go. Look at that. That's going to work perfect. So I could, um, some of you are really wondering why I don't put them up. I could put them up, but sometimes the, um, that they're exactly even with the drawer. And this way I can actually see what color they are. So these are going to work perfect. I'm going to go ahead and do one drawer to show you guys what it's going to look like. Um, and then I will obviously need to order a few more of these because I only have four of them. Um, and I will get the rest of these drawers organized. So let's get started. Different day, different shirt. Um, this, sometimes when I'm organizing stuff, a lot of times when I'm organizing stuff, I will start the job the day before and then I will come back and revisit it the next day. A lot of times there's maybe a storage question or I don't know how I want to sort things and giving myself a little bit of time to digest the project and problem solve the issues helps me immensely. Uh, so when we were shooting yesterday and I was using the bamboo inserts for the drawers, they were beautiful and they worked great, except that my drawers are old and they have a floating bottom. So when I came back today, it was actually pushing out the back of the drawer and causing the bottom to have a big hole in the bottom. So I solved that problem with cardstock inserts that I showed you how to make in the video a little bit earlier. So we've got our drawers all organized. Tell me that doesn't look, oops, 100% better, a little bit neater. Don't tip your drawers. Um, but it is much more orderly. When I open the drawer, I know where the blue threads are. I know where the orophil thread is. I know where the um, different weights of threads are. This actually goes over there. So how I've done it is without, them rolling away again. How I've done it is these are all of my Aurafil 40 weight and 50 weight. And as I said earlier in the video, because I do a lot of work with Aurafil and I have to make sure I'm using their threads in those projects, I separated my threads by brand. You probably don't need to do that unless you're in the same boat as me. Um, in that respect, then I would separate them by weight and only weight. I wouldn't worry about the brand. Um, so these, I put the 40 and 50 weights together because when I'm doing applique edging, I usually will end up mixing those two weights anyway. Um, and it's nice to know what colors I have. And there really wasn't a lot of 40 weights for me to then create a whole nother drawer for. So that was drawer number one. So the second drawer, because again, I have three drawers to work with, um, is this guy. And this is the Aurafil 40 and 50 weight neutrals here, because I have a lot of those. I do most of my piecing with neutral threads. I don't usually match the thread color to the fabric. I usually will do the neutral. And I think I talked about that a little earlier in the video. And then I had all my Mettler threads. So I separated those by color. Again, 99% um, of them are 50 weight. There's a couple 40 weights mixed in, but I know that they're there, so I will keep an eye out for those. And then after the Mettler neutrals, I have my monofilament threads that I use to put bindings on and to do some applique. And um, I, I tend to use a lot of monofilament threads, so I have those here. And so that was drawer two. And then the third drawer and final drawer is kind of my mishmash drawer. So in here, I have polyester threads because you really should keep just some polyester threads on hand. They're good if you're sewing any polyester fabric. You don't want to use cotton thread on polyester because the strength is different. Um, I have all of these beautiful Weeks Dye Works or, uh, 
ombre threads that I had collected over the years. And then for a while there, there was a company that was hand dyeing thread and I bought all of these spools here and I, I just, I've never used them because, well, I used them some, but I didn't use them a lot because they were in the third drawer and I never thought to look there. So now that I've got this organized and separated, I'll definitely be grabbing these threads more. And that is the key to being organized is that you can find what you need, even if you don't know you need it. Um, and then I have my Aurafil specialty threads here. There's 12 weight, 28 weight, the Aurafil flosses, and then the silk threads. So I have everything organized in my drawers and I'm good to go. Now, another thing I did, if you are brand specific, if you get the color card from the company, and sometimes you can purchase these directly from the company or you can get a quilt shop to order them for you. I went through and I highlighted all of the threads I had. And I used the Frickson Highlight, Frickson, Frickson Highlighter Pens. Um, I used pink for the 50 weight and green for the 40 weight. And I went ahead and highlighted all the threads I have so that if I look in here and I find a thread I need, I know it's in the drawer. Otherwise I know I probably need to try and order it. Um, and I like using the Frickson highlighters because these are erasable. So if I accidentally mark one, I can erase it, or if I've used up the thread and I no longer have it, I can erase it and it doesn't ruin the card. So I can just continually mark these as I go. And I will just keep this in the drawer with the threads. Um, for my bobbins, I keep all of my bobbins. I call these like, they look like baby teething rings. They're bobbin holders. Um, I'll see if I can find a link on Amazon and link it below. Um, but I love these to hold all my bobbins. One, at a glance, I can see what colors I have bobbins already spun up for. Uh, two, it tucks the, the tail of the thread inside the case so they don't go flying all over the place. So I love that. And I just keep these in my sewing cabinet. So when I grab a spool of thread, I just look at these and see what color I need. And you can see I didn't even organize these by colors. I just sort of stick them in the rings. I've been using these for years and years and years, and they are the best way to hold your bobbins and keep them neat so you don't have this big mess in your drawer. Now, there are other ways you could store your threads, um, and I want to talk a little bit about that before we wrap this up. One is I used to hold them. I used to display them on a wall with a rack. If you are not going to turn over your threads a lot, I don't recommend doing that because then they get very dusty. And if you live like me in Arizona and the sun comes in, they can fade um, and they will dry out. Thread does dry out. It does have a shelf life um, and it'll become brittle. And I don't know necessarily if keeping it on the wall versus in the drawer helps with the strength and aging of the thread, but it will definitely, if you have them in a drawer, will keep them from getting dusty and keep them from fading. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of how I organize my threads. If you have ideas on how you organize your threads or just throw a picture down. Let me see what your thread collection looks like. I hope this has helped you out and I appreciate you watching and I will see you next time. Thanks. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, make sure you like and subscribe below. You can find the Whimsical Workshop on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us.